Hello, this is Jake, and welcome to episode three of building the Trumpeter Titanic sinking diorama. As you can see, it's you know it's uh, temporarily screwed down here with a bracket, uh, just to give you an idea of what it will look like. Um, loads to do, loads to do in this series, but I'm back. I got plenty of videos coming. I've been very busy, as you all know. Uh, but if you want to keep up to date with this amazing project that I'm working on, please do remember to give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, before we jump into taking a look at what we're doing today and start painting it up and everything, um, thank you all for the feedback. I've had so many questions, people messaging me, how do you do this, and questions about how good the model is and everything. I've also had a lot of questions and people telling me that Titanic didn't sink like this. The angle is completely wrong. You shouldn't be doing it. It's, it's completely wrong. It's not right. It should be done right. Um, I'm well aware how the Titanic sank. No one knows better than I do. Um, but I'm going for a dramatic spectacle of a model here. Um, so I'm not going for 100% realism. I'm going off what dragged me into the Titanic all those years ago, watching the 1997 James Cameron film. And one of my favourite scenes is when the Titanic stern is completely in the air like this, uh, which we will see now. So those moments before she split in two and where everyone's looking from the lifeboats and they can see uh, her, the ship going down, sinking, and you can hear the screaming and the creaking of the ship as well. Um, that's what I'm going for with this diorama. So yes, it's not 100% correct how it sank. The angle is too steep. I know that. I've done that purposely to fit it within the diorama as well as look very dramatic. Um, so there we got that all out of the way. Let me tell you what's happening in this episode. So eagle-eyed viewers may notice the portholes have been drilled out. Not all of them. There's still quite a few to do. Um, but I didn't want to, you know, have a video this episode me drilling out every portal because, quite frankly, it'd be a very long video, very boring. Um, so I've drilled loads out, but I will do um, some little portals at the stern here that we got to drill out and that and just show you how I did that. Um, also in this episode, I promised that episode three, we would be painting it. Yes. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to be doing is, um, first of all, using this red primer. The entire ship's going to be coated in there, so the Titanic will be red for a small amount of time. Um, so yes, it will be in primer red. Now, this is great. This red primer I've used loads of times on model boats and everything, even on my RC um, Hamburg tender. And basically, this red will be ideal for the bottom of the hull, where it's supposed to be red. So when we come to masking it off to put the uh, black on, which is right here this satin black um i can still keep the red down below that'd be great so that's that's what's going to be happening with this um and then for the white i'm using this bmw alpine white now you will notice something from all of these colors they're not model paints um at least 80 percent of the models i build are painted in car paint just because um, I really like the choice of colours you can get. For instance, let me just show you this. This is um, a Raval VW van. Now, they recommend you using a Tamiya paint and, or Raval paint to paint it up. This is actually a green pearl uh, car paint for, um, I believe it's a Chevrolet Camaro, old 80s paint colour. And that colour looks great, so I chose it for this. No model paints were use for it and the white roof is actually this alpine white here and let me just the other trumpeter titanic so this is my first one now this is going to be down here for quite a while um whilst i'm working on this diorama here um but again we got the white this one here uh the black satin black which is right there spray paint auto tech and then we got the red primer, which is there. That's all three colours that I'm going to be using with this. Now, granted, this one's not finished, so I've still got to do the yellow pinstriping, which we'll be taking a look at in the next episode, not this episode. 
Um, but there you go. You can see how the colours are going to look. So I'm very happy with the choices I've gone for. Okay. Um, let me just talk you through some of the uh, features that this diorama is going to have. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a small bracket. I drilled an O-War into the deck, put a small bracket in, and I can unscrew this any time to remove it. It's not going to be fitted down securely until it's all painted. Um, and then the details are added as well. Uh, then I will actually stick the model down once the light's in it and everything. Uh, talking about lights, so we will be using the trumpeter lights that come with the model along with additional lights that I'll be wiring in. Um, but we need power. So basically, where's my polystyrene? Um, the entire model is going to be covered in this uh, polystyrene like this. Let me just, um, there we go. So you can see that the water line, this is going to be the top of the water. The reason for this is, I can then countersink the um, lifeboats. So using polystyrene, I can uh, cut out the groove where the lifeboats go so they're sunk into the water. So they look realistic with the uh, figures added and everything. So that's why I've gone for polystyrene. I've also gone with, I believe this is 25 mil thick. Reason for that is, I'm gonna have a battery box here. And this battery box will have a little switch where I can turn the lights on and off on the uh, actual model. And the wires are run from a chop blocker here, underneath the uh, polystyrene, to another chop block here, and then into the actual ship. Um, this will all be, you know, secured, fitted, and won't have to be moved once it's done. Um, but I will just use chop blocks so it's easier to um, screw the wires in. So when this gets fitted, we'll have two wires coming out of all the lights into here and then we just turn it on here um, I'll probably it depends on battery life but I usually just use one of these square little batteries um, they should be plenty powerful uh, to power the lights in here if not I might go to something a bit bigger I can always make this area bigger if I want to um, so we'll see we'll do all of this before we even start putting the water on um, so we know it all works and everything um so that's the plan with that so as i said it is quite easy to move just uh we've got one screw here screwdriver is a bit big for it really um there we go that's him there we go and there we have it so easy to move for now. Um, seal the portholes. There's still one or two um, that I need to drill out. I think this side is nearly complete, just apart from some of these up here. So what I'm gonna do now is drill one of these out and I'll show you how I did that. So um, where are we looking? So these two here have been missed out. Now I'm gonna be using my drill with the right drill bit. Just make sure you get it centered because you don't want to get this wrong. Actually, that might be the wrong drill bit. Um, I'm glad I didn't go ahead of that. Uh, let me just test out one of these holes. Oh, no, here's the right one. So, nice and slowly. There we go. Same again for next to it. I've had this drill. 13 years and it still does the job that's how i done them now the smaller ones become a problem because my drill can only go to a certain size so i have to use one of these this is a hand drill now it's all right when you're drilling them out but when you've got to do a load of them it can start in the hands um and i've done probably 80 this morning on one side Okay, so I've just flipped it over. This is the other side now. Um, you see I've got a couple that still need doing. One there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you how this Android works. And then I'll do the rest off camera just because it takes a while. Um, so you just put some pressure on. Screw it in like that. Move over to this one.
And there we go. There we go. So you can see that one there. There you go. That one needs cleaning up, as you can see. Uh, which I will do this. I will go over all of them. Just make sure they're all fine. Um, I could have used a Dremel. However, the Dremel I own only has one speed. And I don't want to risk uh, damaging it. Um, I did make a mistake on the other side. On one of the portals. I'm just checking if it's not this side. And I have to use a bit of filler just to fill it in. Um, but mistakes were made and they can be fixed. So there we go. I've drilled out all the portals now. All of them. Um, I don't know how well they come up on camera. I certainly take my hats off to everyone who actually didn't eat, done every portal or on the entire ship. As I'm only doing the stern. So fair play to you all. Um, but there are a couple of things I just have to sort out now. Um, before we prime the ship up prime the model um, got to add the little bracket hooks that go across here um, which are photo X parts uh, reason we got to add them now is because there's no point putting them on after we've painted it um, and also there's a little bit of flash I need a sort of on the molding just right at the back of the stern so I'll get that sorted now Okay, so now, before we prime it up, I need to fit these. These are some of the photo etched parts. I don't know how well that come up. There we go. Um, now, when these come, these come on a big sheet. Uh, I've cut them off just to make it a little bit easier. So I don't need the old sheet on display. Um, they come with a film on both sides. Peel one side off, but leave one side on. That way... When you cut them out, which I'm just using a scalpel here, they won't fly off because they're still stuck on the other side. And that way, if you can see that, there we go. Move that to one side. There we go. Let me just. Uh... There you go. There's our little bracket. So that. I think there's three on each side we need to fit. So let me just bring it a little bit closer. Um, notice I've already fitted one just to show you. And the next one's got to go here. So what we need is. Well, first of all, we need our part. Let's put that on the ship there and to stop it rocking up and down just got to put some foam underneath now i got tweezers to uh pull it on but we need something to put a little bit of super glue in there because we don't want to put massive blot up because that would just stand out like a sort of thumb so you need a little something like this which is i use this quite a bit i've used it a lot on my um, RC boat I was building. So put a little bit of uh, super glue on that for this. And this might be a little too much to be honest. And then grab our part. Put it on the tweezers. Like that. Uh, the glue's not going to stick it straight away. However you will have. A little bit of time just to um you know get it in the right place or it does that and gets stuck on the tweezers not the first time that's happened today it might even be easier at this point to just place it like this this one's not gone very well um I won't edit it out just so you can see and then just uh, there we go and that super glue a dry this is probably a good time to mention that if you do get any glue over spill which I have to be honest um, right here it's not going to show up on camera but if you look in a certain light you can see it easy to sort this out some very fine 
black sandpaper like this and just um, oh, let me just just very light like that um, again if you prime it and you notice it you can always sand it again and then prime again um, but it's very light I've just noticed it now so I'll do that and yep straight away that's gone so a little bit of a tip there always have some of that fine sandpaper if you got it um you might be thinking about when we spray it up what about this deck here because this is all stuck now i'm not going to mask any of it off the entire thing's going to be painted in the red the red primer then i will hand paint these decks here that's something we'll look at doing in the next episode painting these up and then we can start fitting the other decks and okay so we're going to prime it up now again remember that i'm using this for the water line as well so when we mask it off and put the black on we'll still have this red primer shown on the bottom which i've done with the original you see in the background now so i'll speed this clip up a bit just so you can see me priming it then i'll show off how the mask the line off and put the black on Okay, so we got it all primed up. Um, the red is great. A lot of you are going to be saying it looks very orangey. I don't know why the camera makes it look quite orange, but no, it is red. This is the right colour that I want for the hull. Um, it is matte, so of course it will need a lacquer, uh, which, you know, it's not going to take five minutes. Um, I won't put clear lacquer on until I got the black on and the white. Um, and I'll do that at a later date. So all we need now is to start doing the black. And what I'm going to do with the black, same again. I'm basically just going to cover this entire top half black. Then mask off the black to do the white. Same as I've done with my other, you can just see over there. Um, using some of this modeling tape here. And just to get it right. Now a lot of people are going to have different views on where this line should be. Um, I believe I'm putting it in the right place by just above there. Okay, so I just got a uh, newspaper and this is actually really old. Uh, where's the date? This was done the shed the other day. Uh, uh, it doesn't say, but it's old. So you can see I filled in some holes. This is where we put a piece of wood inside just to help when we actually stick the model to the board. And um, that's all glued in, set inside now. So I took the screws out and just used normal wood filler. You know, it's, it's plenty for what we need. It's going to stick that. That's great. So that's still drying. Uh, but once that's fully dry, I'll sand it down and give it a light primer again. Won't have to mask off the sides. It'll just be a light um, coat um so i've just got to make sure the stern's right because if i've got this tape wrong it will show Okay, so it's all masked off. I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. Okay. Because you don't want to end up with a... Um, make sure it's clean as well. There's a few bits down. You could use a makeup brush and just go over it. Um, like I was doing earlier, pointing. Just get any of the bits off it. Just 
see if there's any in the grooves. There we go. Okay, here we are. I just took the newspaper off. Well, I took it off about an hour ago and I discovered a problem. I've done the line wrong here. Now, first time around, I've done it right. As you can see there, that's perfect. I don't know how I managed it, but it needs to be down to there. And then link back up. So I'm going to tape it off. It's nothing too serious. We can get it sorted. Um, and we'll get that sorted now. Okay, there we go. So I've got it painted up. i got the black sorted just down here. I made sure the waterline was right. Um, what I've got to do, I've decided that I'm going to end the episode here. Purely just to give me time to let it dry and everything. Then in episode four, which I'll be starting to film tomorrow or Friday... Uh, we'll be up very soon and we'll have a look at painting this in the Alpine BMW white which is basically that colour there the Titanic over here um, so we'll get that painted white as well as the back here and have a look at and painting some of the deck and then having a look at some of the other deck pieces like this that will go on there but also in episode 4 we'll be having a look at adding well, looking at a way to sort the lights out because when I get the lights in there, um, i got to make sure the portal is all lit up and everything like that, uh, which you can Trump to give you the manual and everything to show you how to do that. But I'm going to have to do some modifications just for some realism as well as look at some photos as well um, from the movie because that's what I'm going for with this rack. It's not a rack. It's a sinking. Um, so that's what we'll do in episode four. We'll have a look at that. Um, I did just damage a bit of the fin there, so I'll get that sorted off camera. But yeah, so I'll leave it here, let it dry properly, and then crack on with the white in episode 4. So if, you, um, if you're if you happy with this video, uh, have any questions, please do feel free to ask. Uh, there'll be a link to the Trumpeter Titanic Facebook page. There are a great lot of guys on there, um, and they can help you out with everything with this model kit. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think. Loads more to do, of course, and we will see you all very soon with episode four. Bye for now.